Yeah, good morning from Bonn and thank you very much uh, for having me. Yes, indeed, as you mentioned, we saw a step back in revenue and EBIT in the second quarter, but that was fully expected because the second quarter of 22 was a very extraordinary quarter, where particularly on the forwarding side, we still saw elevated earnings due to the general supply chain constructions. That has by far now normalized. Capacity is back both in the air and ocean freight market, and that is combined with a relatively weak global demand. Against that background, we are very pleased with our performance in the second quarter and in the first half of the year. We managed to achieve an operating result of 3.3 billion in the first six months of 23. And on that basis, we have indeed increased the lower end of our guidance to now 6.2 billion euros. Right, you continue to be in expansion mode, even though uh, there's been some pressure in this quarter on the headline numbers. Uh, and your acquisition of MNG Cargo is something that's interesting. Uh, giving you more scale in, in Turkey. How value accretive is this and are you in acquisitive mode? Yeah, I think it's a great question because that points to one of the core pillars of our strategy, e-commerce, which is for us a continued uh, driver of growth. And we actually also saw in the second quarter growth in our European e-com solutions business and in our parcel Germany business. So e-commerce is a growth driver for us. And that is the context in which we made the decision to acquire MNG Cargo in Turkey. The Turkish market is a very dynamic market. Uh, it has great growth potential also on the e-com side. And MNG Cargo is a fantastically positioned player in that market. So we are very excited about this growth opportunity in the e-com sector in Turkey. And it will definitely be accretive uh, and uh, boost our earnings growth potential going forward. Now, Melanie, uh, DHL Group was uh, one of the logistics companies that actually benefited from the supply chain issues that popped up around the time of the pandemic, uh, some of the congestion that we saw at, at ports, because, of course, DHL Group was well placed with your own fleet. Now that things are returning back to normal, what are you seeing in terms of market share? Is there more competition? Yeah, I think it's a complex question because it varies between the different businesses. So, I mean, first of all, on the e-com side, we have seen a structural increase in e-com penetration. Yes, there has been some normalization over the last quarters, but when you look at the level of our e-com volumes across the board, it's significantly higher than what it was pre-pandemic. So that has been a boost for us and I think also for the e-com business overall. On the express and forwarding side, um, we had a time when capacity was obviously very constrained, where we were benefiting on the express side from having our own fleet. And I think we can fairly say that we have really made good use of that uh, opportunity. And I think that is also a very good basis for us to grow going forward. I think the market, which probably saw the biggest turbulences over the last two years and is now in a normalization phase, is the air and ocean freight uh, business, where we don't own the capacity of ourselves, but we broker capacity from ocean carriers and um, uh, airlines to our customers. Here, we saw a very strong capacity constraint. And that was coupled with some peaky, extraordinary demand peaks over the last two years. What has now happened is that obviously capacity is back and at the same time global demand is relatively low. That leads to volume declines. When you look at our air freight and ocean freight volumes, you see minus 13%, minus 9% in the second quarter. That is also what competition is reporting. So this is really a general normalization in the market. What is important for us is that we are not just uh, sitting there looking at what is happening in the market. We are really driving our own improvement agenda based on our new IT systems. And on this basis, even in this normalizing environment, we had a very, very good GP to EBIT conversion rate in the second quarter.